and knowing is half the battle. Yo, what to do that boy King Solomon? New prediction, new prediction. So Fossey says, Dr. Fossey, excuse me, says 60K is the new prediction. Unlike the previous 200K deaths from the Rona. It's now down to predicting about 60K, which is actually about the same average as the flu is every year. So is this flu season? And Rona. Anyway, let's see what he got to say. It's hurting tonight from the stunning new unemployment numbers, at least 17 million now out of work, to the still climbing death toll. Another 2,000 lives lost nationally since yesterday as this wildfire of misery rapidly burns across the country. Yet tonight, the trend is clear. The curve is flattening, and that brings its own challenges of keeping Americans focused on what's working. Our team has a lot to tell you tonight. Gabe Gutierrez starts us off now from New York. With flags at half-staff throughout New York on the governor's orders, tonight a dramatic drop. New hospitalizations and ICU admissions are at their lowest level since the coronavirus crisis began. Authorities say it's clear widespread social distancing is working. We're flattening the curve so far. But it was the state's deadliest day. Again, 799 people in just 24 hours, many of them the most vulnerable, who'd been sick the longest. So far, more than 7,000 have been lost in New York State alone. For perspective, less than 3,000 were killed on 9-11. It was a silent explosion that just ripples through society with the same randomness, the same evil that we saw on 9-11. At a city cemetery, workers in protective gear are now burying nearly five times more unclaimed bodies a week. A new study finds that the coronavirus began to circulate in New York in mid-February and came here largely from Europe, not China. At the epicenter's epicenter, Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, where two weeks ago we saw a line for testing stretching down the block. Today, we saw virtually no line at all, just one small sign that hospitals like these are seeing fewer new cases. In Manhattan, plans for an emergency field hospital at St. John the Divine, one of the world's largest cathedrals, have been scrapped. It doesn't appear the extra beds will be needed. But cases have exploded on nearby Long Island, and doctors are warning New Yorkers not to be complacent. It does not mean that it's a time for us to take our foot off the gas. It does not mean that it's time for us to let up. In fact, it's a time for us to double down. We've spoken with ER doctor Craig Spencer, an Ebola survivor since the pandemic began. Seeing people die day after day, many people who were fine just the day before, even the morning of, is really, really tough. Among the lives lost, Hal Wilner, a music producer for Saturday Night Live. Dr. Guido Volcovici inspired his daughter to become a reporter. Richard Weber worked as a lawyer and civil rights advocate. His son says the loss still doesn't seem real. He was someone who always did the right thing when, uh, you know, even when nobody was looking. Still, there are many signs of hope, including the former Army medic from Virginia, Steve Colosi, who said goodbye to his wife and parked his RV outside the home of her sick elderly parents in New Jersey as they battled COVID-19. It was a no-brainer for me. They were wonderful. Uh, when I got back from Iraq, it makes me a little... We had to sell our house. And we moved in with them for two years. And, um, you know, we, we took care of them, but they took care of us. Now, he's been taking care of them for two weeks. I wouldn't have made it. I was ready to give up. And tonight, their turnaround is remarkable. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, New York. I'm Miguel Almaguer. Tonight, amid some signs of progress in states like New York and California, several others battling the coronavirus are just now diving deeper into crisis. In Illinois, where the death toll is mounting, the largest convention center in the country has become a field hospital, bracing for a peak in cases likely weeks away. But for Michael Bain and his family... It's not like the flu. It makes you feel like you're going to die. The life and death struggle already awry. Wait, what if I'm not days away from being released from the hospital? What if I'm days away from, you know, not being alive anymore? 
The Cook County Jail in Chicago is believed to be the nation's largest known source of infections in the U.S., the roughly 400 cases there surpassing the deadly cluster in Washington state and the early explosion of cases in New Rochelle, New York. In Colorado, where officials warn morgues could be overrun with bodies, Ernesto Castro was deemed the sickest patient in the state. The 35-year-old spent nearly a week in a coma on a ventilator, becoming an incredible story of survival finally leaving the hospital to rejoin his family at home. I'm blessed to be alive. Uh, I'm thankful every day to God that he gave me the second opportunity. As new infections explode in Louisiana, officials in some areas say they have more cases per capita than any other state. But the governor of Michigan, where more than 20,000 are sick, also calls their situation dire. In Detroit alone, the Henry Ford Health System already diagnosing more more than 4,100 coronavirus patients. The average hospital stay, six and a half days, while in the ICU, the most critical patients spend over a week. The number of deaths has increased and will continue to increase. With long lines outside food banks around the country, several cities are rolling out new precautions to keep shoppers and workers safe after a handful of supermarket employees died from the virus. In some areas, orders to stay home and social distancing appear to be working, lowering the projected national death toll. And it looks more like the 60,000 than the 100 to 200,000. But having said that, we better be careful that we don't say, OK, we're doing so well, we could pull back. Encouraging signs amid the crisis, giving so many reason to cheer. In Arkansas, a standing ovation for David Williams, who spent days on a ventilator and is now reunited with family heading home.